Hi. In this video, we are going to see how we can build a custom named entity recognizer. So first, let's see what is named entity recognition. So given a text corpus, right, named entity recognition or NER as it is called in short, seeks to locate and classify named entities within the given corpus. The named entities can be a person, a organization, a location, it can be quantities or it can be anything. There are some of the models comes with a lot of predefined uh, trained entities. Right. But when we take a particular business scenario, be a financial domain or retail domain or any other domain, there will be a lot of custom name entities which are not in the pre-trained corpus. And that's when we want to train our custom entities. And that's what we are going to do in this video. So let's get started and I will talk about it in detail as we uh, go further in the code. Right. So I am importing the Spacey Fast package. Spacey is an NLP library which has a predefined set of components uh, built in that you can leverage. It is similar to your Python NLTK or any other uh, NLP packages. And then what I am doing is from that uh, Spacey method, I am loading a predefined language model with English corpus in it. And that I am assigning to NLP. And once I do it, I am printing the pipe names. That is the what are the pipelines that are available by default in the model in the language model that I have loaded in NLP. So what I can see is by default there is a tagger which is nothing but part of speech uh, tagger. There is a parser and there is a third one is the NER that is the named entity recognizer. So this is what we are going to use and we are also going to customize it for our data. Right. Uh, so what I am going to do now is like first let me try to use the existing NER and see what are the predefined entities that are available. I am just going to run one example. So what I am doing is in the, in the NLP I am passing a text like say simple text like Australia wants to force Facebook and Google to pay media companies for news. So here you can see basically Australia is an entity, Facebook is an entity, Google is an entity and I am assigning to a variable called doc, a document right and then once I do that the next line what I am doing is I am getting the document dot entities that this NLP has predicted and then I am iterating over and then printing the entity text uh, basically uh, whether it's Australia or Facebook or any other thing and I am printing like start character of the text end character of the text and the label uh, what entity it is so if you see the output over here uh, basically Spacey has predicted Australia that is from zero character to nine character as uh, GP GP is nothing but a geopolitical entity which is nothing but a uh, country or location right it has predicted Facebook and organization uh, Facebook and Google as an organization it has done it correctly but it is not perfect again right because Facebook is an organization by itself and Google is an organization by itself so it must have classified as two different entities but it has not done that right so basically these are some inbuilt uh, predefined named entities uh, that uh, some of the NLP model has but now what I want to do is say I am from a financial domain and I want to predict test uh, text that comes into uh, my system right it can be coming through a chat it can be coming through a voice channel or it can be coming via any other channel I want to see like whether uh, and whether this named entity recognize it so let me give a couple of text and let's see so the first text I ask I do not have money to pay my credit card account so somebody is calling the uh, call center or chatting the call center agent telling like okay um, I don't have any money to pay now can you defer my payment right so let's see what Spacey does. So now I am running the same thing. It's the same AI explanation I give you. If you see, there is no output after I run it. It has not recognized any entities in this, right? Now let me run one more text. Uh, like it's telling me what is the process to open a new savings account if you really see on the top one uh, in this case the credit card is a product that the bank has it's the savings account is a product the bank has and maybe in this case like uh, payment was an uh, activity that they want to do in this case open is an activity they want to do let me run these as well and see like what Spacey does so here also the output is empty the Spacey is not predicting anything so when I come from a financial domain 
what I want to do is I want to train for these particular custom elements, credit card, pay, uh, savings account open so that like when somebody talks over the chat, I can detect like what is the product that I'm talking about? What is the activity they want to do? Right. Uh, you can see, you can think about this. The advanced version of this is basically your natural language understanding system, right? Rasa or any of the cloud APIs, right? But this is a simple to use system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to train a model that can recognize this banking specific entities. So here is my train data. So what I have done is I have manually given some data and I have labeled some entities. So in this case, uh, money transfer from my checking account is not working. So checking account in this case is an um, product that is 23 to 39 uh, character location it is. It starts with a zero. And then uh, basically the activity is six to 13 that is transfer. And similarly, I have, I have given some more data. I want to check balance in my savings account. I suspect a fraud in my credit card account. So these are different products in a banking system. And what kind of queries comes into a uh, call center agent or an, uh, basically email channel? It can be anything, right? So I want to uh, predict this product and um, activity that is going on. Uh, uh, what I've done is I've taken some sample. I want to show you the output, but in real world, you want to build a good amount of huge corpus for this named entity recognizer to generalize better. In this case, I've just taken a few samples just to quickly show the demo. So I have the training set. So now what I'm going to do is I'm again going to print the pipe names. As you know, there are three pipe names that we saw on the top. In this case, if you see, I have an uh, tagger, I have a parser and NER. And since I am going to only uh, customize the NER component, right? I don't want to touch the other two. I want the other to be as it is. And I want to uh, only to get the NER component. So what I'm doing is I am uh, creating a new NER variable and I'm telling the NLP.getPipes of NER. So out of this component, it's going to only fetch the NER and uh, assign it to a new variable called NER that I have given. Right. Now, next, what I'm going to do is in this NER, it is not trained to recognize this product and activity, but it is trained to recognize other components of it, right? Like it's a geopolitical entity or location or organization. It's trained to identify. So, so what I need to do is I need to add this product and activity into the existing uh, labels, right? So that's what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm taking my train data. I am iterating it and I am picking the annotation, the annotation are nothing but this curly, bra curly braces it will give product and activity and what I'm going is I am going into the NER and adding this particular label the entity of two will give me the activity and product and I am adding it I am telling my NER I have two more uh, categories I want to recognize so I need to add that to the existing NER component first so that's what I'm doing over here and once that is there, what I'm doing is I'm going back to my uh, pipeline on the top and I am disabling all the pipelines. I'm disabling the tagger and parser. So what I'm telling is I am if the pipeline not equal to NER, just assign it to the disable pipes. Why I want to disable it? As I told you, I don't want to train. I don't want to touch my tagger and parser component in this particular video or code, my intention is to focus only on the NER component. So that's why I'm disabling the pipeline. So the disable pipe will contain only NER. It will, uh, sorry, the disable pipe will contain on tagger and parser, which I'm going to ignore in my training process, right? So once I have it, next what I'm doing is I am uh, basically uh, importing a random variable. Um, I will tell you why I am uh, doing it. I am importing a mini batch and compounding. I want to uh, use like a, a kind of a mini batch to train this particular model. So I'm importing. If you don't want to train in a mini batch, if you want to, because I only few, very few, um, uh, very very few training labels I can just directly do a uh, 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 record by record training as well but I imported it and I am just uh, importing like path lib uh, path so the very first I do thing I'm doing is I am disabling uh, calling NLP dot disable pipes I'm calling the disable pipes that I've given on the top so this will disable the tagger and the parser component uh, while training then I am creating an optimizer where I am telling uh, resume the training so in this case I am using an 
existing in NLP pipeline. If you want to train a model from scratch, just uh, give like uh, NLP dot MT uh, and it will create a new NLP object and from that you can train it, right? So once it is done, what I'm doing is I'm starting an iteration. So I want to train for 100 iterations. If you want to train for 30 iteration, just change it to 30. If you want to train for 200 or 300 iteration, just change that. I'm just training for uh, 100 iteration. And I want to make sure my data is not repeated. So I want to shuffle the data in each iteration. And that's why I imported random. What I'm doing is I'm doing random dot shuffle of train. And then I am just uh, initializing an empty losses variable. After that, I'm defining my batch. So I'm calling the mini batch. I am giving my train data set over here. And I'm just telling like how to perform the mini batch. I'm telling like between one to four, just compound it with 1.001 every time. Right. So that's what I'm telling in the mini batch. As I said, this is optional. You can train for every record you want. Right. And then after that, I am in each it will give me a batch of records i am just telling for batches in batch so i am iterating to the batch uh, every time and then i am taking my batch data and from there i am getting my text and annotation so on the top i add a text which tells like i want to open a savings account my annotation is open is an activity and my um, basically uh, savings account is my product so that is my annotation so i am taking the text and annotation and i am calling the nlp dot update method so what the nlp dot update method will do is it will go to the ner and train the uh, train my particular uh, intent which i have given text i have given with the NP nlp system so that's what it is going to do and as you know the nlp has only ner because i am disabled the other pipeline i am passing the uh, text i am passing the annotation and i am passing like few other variables i am passing the optimization that i created on the top and i am just printing the losses in each step so let me run this it's going to quickly run for 100 uh, steps it's not going to take much time now remember like uh, while this training was going on i have just created some very few samples some hardly 10 or 15 samples but in real world it's not going to generalize it's going to do a decent job it's not going to be a perfect model it's still going to have some error but what you may want to do is you may want to uh, go and create a huge corpus so the manually creating can be tedious uh, you can go through your existing chat records or existing voice channel speech to text records you can take the and you can start building this particular text and you can use any of the annotation tool available online to quickly annotate your data uh, but the more data you have the more better model you might get and this while well, this training is going on the next what i'm going to do is i'm just going to take the the existing data that is I've given text and I'm going to print all the entities and doc uh, the, the doc and entities over there using my new model so now this NLP is a new model because I've done an NLP update right so I'm taking the same text basically my same training test uh, right and then I'm going to just um, now print it and see how it performs now if you see basically it has recognized in the first one the loan account as product credit card as product uh, in this it means the activity right in some the activity is recognized in some cases only the product is recognized so the activity part has not done properly but the product seems to be doing good so i need to feed more data for activity uh, right so that's what uh, basically i might collect more data in this case but let's go and uh, feed in some text which was not seen during the training process right and see how well our uh, our uh, nlp model performs so what i'm doing here is i'm giving a new text what is the process to open a new savings account i did not have the same text on the top if you see the text i had on the top was um, basically uh, i want to open a new account or something like that uh, i am here for opening a new savings account that was my text right now i have completely changed the text in a different way because a human can ask a same question 10 different ways right so that's what i have done what is the process to open a new savings account and then i am iterating printing the uh, entities and everything similar to what i did i am also using like display c uh, dot render method which will actually give a good way of visualizing or highlighting the entities in the text and that's what i am doing over here so let me run this and see let see how it performs so it is telling okay it's predicted the say product as an uh, the save the product is saving account but it did not predict the open properly right the activity maybe is not trained properly let me give a new uh, word to it my credit card payment will be delayed let's see how it performs in this case 
in this case again it is able to detect credit card uh, is a product and payment is activity and if you see on the top this text was not there so basically here it's doing some better job right and let me add a new one what are the charges on credit card late payment in bank of america i am giving additionally a bank right so i am doing uh, giving the same thing and i am using display c dot render to see the output so now if you see over here it has detect credit card as a product it has detect payment as uh, like activity and Bank of America, ideally it must have detected Bank of America as an organization. We use an existing model to update it. So it must have detected but did not detect it. And what is the reason? Let I will talk about what is the reason it did not detect. Now let me go with one more example. Uh, I lost my investment account password and cannot open my account now. Let's see like how well it does. In this case, if you see over here, the predicted investment account is product and it predicted account now as product as, product as well, right? Because that's an account. So there have been false positives. And this is the reason I said we need more training data. Whereas open was activity which it did not uh, predict, right? Now let's go one more and say like what is the status of my loan account and again loan account is product it predicted properly right now it has been doing a decent job with the very small training data that we have given let's let's go back to the bank of america why it did not predict and the reason for that is uh, you can read in this particular uh, blog there is something called uh, catastrophic uh, forgetting i'm sorry i did not spell the word properly right uh, it is basically what it is doing is um, if in this case it is able to generalize on the new data better but it is forgetting the old um, uh, historical data right now in this case what you need to do is you also need to take existing data and train it along with the new data so that is pretty common it's a known issue in spacey and a lot of other nlp models as well and that's the reason some of the new models that are there uh, in the market performs better right so to overcome this the other thing you can do is you can have two models in your prediction cycle one you can create a empty model with your text the second what you can do is you can um, you can go with the existing model to predict other entities it is and then you can combine the output and show that is other option so this was the first text that i uh, uh, predicted right and uh, you can see basically australia was um, basically identified as a geopolitical entity facebook and google as organization let's see how it performs right and if you see the there's no output at all it, it literally like forgot uh, forgot the original model and that's the that, that's a main problem with uh, any of the nl ner models like if um, you basically have the aspect of forgetting the old data so you may want to go and add more data and then uh, basically uh, train your uh, model and add the existing data and train your model so that's about it i just wanted to quickly show how you can build a custom named entity thank you very much